sit you down by the fire. Well, call the crack and I'll weave you a tale that had been told in Scotland for centuries. And the cousins of the tale had been told by the Chinook, the Inuit, and all the Icelandic peoples, for it is a tale as ancient as the sea herself. The soul of a woman, the soul of a selkie, is at home in the depths of the sea. Here the mysteries of life play sweet as a song, neath the waves where all life came to be. Twas many, many summers ago on the misty isle of sky, when the full moon shone a million moon diamonds on the water, that a fisherman set out to sea. Alone he rowed his little boat, alone as he always did, so alone that he did not know any more just how lonely he was. The steady sound of his oars in the water matched the steady beat of his heavy heart. When very strangely, a sound came to him, floating through the mist, a sound so beautiful that his heart leapt right out of its heaviness for joy. His eyes looked for the source of such sweet music, and there, on a tiny island lit by the glow of the moon, he saw a gathering of women, dancing, singing, laughing, full of their own beauty. The fisherman let his boat drift in closer to watch them dance beneath the waves, bodies glowing round and strong, movements as graceful as ocean waves. He was mesmerized. Then he saw them each retrieve a bundle. What was it? A skin, a seal skin. And one by one, they put on their skins and they became glistening gray seals. With joy, they slipped back into the water. All except for one woman, the loveliest of all to his eye. She was looking for her seal skin. The fisherman saw it, for it was there by the rocks where he hid. But before she could retrieve it, he took it and hid it beneath his nets. For it is said that whoever possesses the skin of a selkie will have it in their power to command as they will. The fisherman climbed onto the island and said, lovely lady of the sea, come with me and be my wife. But I am a selkie and my home is the sea. She looked deeply into his sad eyes. She had seen man before. She had feared his hunting boats and nets, but there was something about this man. Was it his sorrow? Was it some unspoken ancient promise? The fisherman spoke again, gentlewoman, Bonnie and bright, be my wife. I am a Selkie, and my home is the sea, but with ye I will go. And so the seal woman went with the fisherman to the misty isle of sky. Her ways were different from the people of the land, but all agreed that she was a good wife to the man. In time, they had a child, a son. They named him Morin. The boy grew strong and well. Each morning, he went fishing with his father, and each afternoon, they brought home lots of haddie and herring to eat. In the evenings by the fire, his mother told him tales of the magical world beneath the waves, of underwater mountains and canyons, forests of trees that sway in the ocean currents, beautiful creatures that swim in the glistening sunlight. And her eyes would shine as she spoke, and they seemed to hold such mystery and wonder. And so it was, as seven summers came and seven summers went. But in time, the seal woman began to lose her luster. Her hair became dull. Her eyes lost their shine. Her glistening skin began to dry and crack. She became thin. Her stories by the fire became wistful and sad. And she had just enough strength to tuck Morin to bed. On the night of the harvest moon, it seemed that the tides were so high that the ocean wanted to cover the whole of the land. Morin lay awake in his bed. A mist rolled in low off the sea, and it carried with it a sound, a calling, a song. Morn. Was he dreaming? No. It was his name he heard, and he could not ignore it. Morin slipped out into the night to follow the calling across the windswept heather, down the well-worn path of the bluffs, past the little shed where his father kept his rods, hooks, and nets, down to the rocks and sand below. Climbing across the rocks now, he knew he was very close, for the song was very clear. And there, on a large rock just a few feet away, sat a great silver seal, regal in her years, massive in her presence. It was she who sang out. 
Selkie daughter of mine own, come back unto thy selkie home. Selkie daughter of mine own, come back unto thy selkie home. Ye've lived on land, been good and true, but thy soul, thy home, calls out for you. Selkie daughter of mine own, come back unto thy selkie home. Selkie daughter, bonny lass, ye've tarried far too long. It pains my heart to see you weak when I know you be right and strong. Ye've lived on land, been good and true, but thy soul, thy home, calls out for you. Selkie daughter of mine own, come back unto thy selkie home. The tides began to turn, and the water began to rise up around Morin and the great seal. Morin could see that his father's shed was soon to be reached by the rising tide. Morin was quick to act. He hurried up to the shed and began removing the rods, hooks, and nets, carrying them up to dry land. Back and forth he went as the silver seal looked on. When he returned finally for the last net, he hoisted it up off the floor, and he found something underneath it a carefully folded bundle. He unwrapped it, and oh, oh, the soft, warm, wonderful seal skin was in it. He knew it was his mother's, for he could feel her all throughout it. The silver seal looked on, eyes blazing, and Mora knew what he had to do. He returned home by the light of early dawn and gently lay the seal skin in his mother's lap. Her eyes grew wide. And a wild joy came upon her. She laughed and cried at the same time. She hugged Morn in the sealskin with all her strength. Whatever happens new, you must trust me and not be afraid. This I will do, said Morin. She took her son by the hand, and together they ran towards the shore. At the edge of the sea, she put on her sealskin. Her vitality returned. She breathed into Morin's mouth, and the part of him that was his mother transformed his body into that of a seal. Mother and son swam effortlessly beneath the waves. It was the same world she had described to him by the fire. Underwater mountains and canyons, forests of trees that sway in the ocean current, beautiful creatures that swim in the glistening sunlight. A great gathering of seals came to them now and welcomed them with great joy. The great silver seal came to him and called him grandson. There was much celebration. Morin felt very at home with the seal family, but on the seventh day beneath the waves, he asked about his father. His mother explained, Your father waits for you. He is a good man, and he loves you as do I. I will never, ever be far from you. Just come to the sea and I will be here. All your seal family will be here. I will guard your seal skin for you. And on nights when the moon is full, we will all be together. And so Morin returned to the land where his father tearfully embraced him. The man knew that the wrong that had been done seven years ago was now set aright. Morin grew well with all his father taught him, but the people said he had that same knowing look in his eyes, that same shining look of his mother. In time, Morin married and had children of his own. In the evenings by the fire, he taught them to hear the calling of the sea, the calling of their souls. And when they went to the sea, the seals always came, and they went to the sea often, eyes radiant with mystery, wonder, and wisdom as ancient as the sea herself. The soul of a woman, the soul of a selkie, is at home in the depths of the sea. Here the mysteries of life play sweet as a song, neath the waves where all life came to be.